Welcome back to Classic Replay. In this episode, we continue Attack of the Clones for the Amstrad CPC, and the game in question is Killer Gorilla. Donkey Kong is not only the game that launched Shigeru Miyamoto's career, but also the Mario and Donkey Kong characters, the Nintendo Corporation, and the platform genre as a whole. After the highs of Donkey Kong came the relative lows of the clones. Climate was one such offering, and my god the sheer lack of effort, neglect almost, is evident for all to see. I just hope and pray Miyamoto didn't. As things turn out though, Killer Gorilla is quite a close copy of the original, with excellent sound and graphics, well for the time. It features four screens, and the main difficulty will be found on a third when precise timing is needed to jump on and off of the lifts. Now as you can see in the top right hand corner, that's the arcade original, and Killer Gorilla does bear some resemblance. And it's a clone that doesn't stray too far from the original, with colorful graphics and good use of the computer's sound. So four screens of action are present in this rather ordinary version, but at the time it was probably the best that could be found on the Amstrad CPC. But that later changed in 1987 when Ocean Software won the arcade rights for Donkey Kong on the Amstrad CPC along with the other 8-bit versions. And the results I have to say are something along the lines of arcade perfect. Now in Killer Gorilla you're not quite controlling Mario but you are controlling a daredevil figure who has to scale ramps and scaffolding to rescue the girl from Kong while avoiding barrels thrown at him. Now there might have been more clones uh, on the Amstrad CPC, but Donkey Kong it's safe to say with its climbing and jumping strategies has inspired dozens of imitators and variations that are less destructive in their ethos uh, than the ones deriving from Space Invaders and Defender. But it's Killer Gorilla that we're playing today. It's a personal favourite of mine from back in the day. My heart severely goes out to anybody that was stuck playing Climate. And for a while, despite being a clone, this was the definitive way of playing Donkey Kong on the Amstrad CPC. I recall and remember the family would gather around the Amstrad CPC and everyone would take their shot at trying to bring down uh, Kong and the scaffolding. Also Killer Gorilla uh, came out on the BBC Micro and it got rave reviews, it was well thought of and the Amstrad CPC is almost a carbon copy. Now would I play this over the arcade original and the later version from Ocean? Well, hell no, but in all seriousness, I still get a warm fuzzy feeling around playing this game. But that's more to do with, at the time, not knowing any better. Looking at it today, uh, in 2021, it's far from sophisticated. But we do have to remember this first came out on the BBC in 1983, and then I think a year later was ported over to the Amstrad CPC. Now I did manage to find an early review in Amstrad Action issue 1 and they seemed to like it and went on to say Killer Gorilla has four screens in which your girlfriend has been kidnapped by a nasty ape and you have to climb to the top of the screen to rescue her. In the good news section they cite that both games have slick graphics, testing platform action and in the bad news they say no prizes for originality. But as a package, they say it represents great value for money. Now I will play this again because I want to bring down the scaffolding and the beast himself. Now I don't remember paying any more than $1.99 for this game. But when you look back at the Amstrad Action early review, um, it came on a... Killer Gorilla Gauntlet release from Micropower for $9.95 and that was on cassette. So maybe I did pay a tenner for it. 
Now there is a fun fact, um, a bit of trivia here about uh, this uh, this this game, Killer Gorilla. The original uh, programmer was Adrian Stevens, and Stevens wrote Killer Gorilla at the age of 17 after buying a magazine with screenshots of Donkey Kong. And apparently, Micropower paid him £400 for the game. Now, that might not sound like a lot in 2021, but in 1983, that was the equivalent of 1168 in today's money. So back then, that would have been a lot of dosh. It's a shame that after completing the four levels, the player just returns to the first level uh, and the game repeats. But what's good is that it gets faster and there's more barrels. And better still, the girders on the first level acquire more holes. You also get an extra life for completing the fourth level. And it basically becomes a game where you chase the high score against friends and family. I almost forgot. This guy, the guy that programmed Killer Gorilla, also programmed uh, Vigilante 8 on the PlayStation. And correct me if I'm wrong, but that was a brilliant game, fantastic game. So he had a legit career in uh, game development, and for all I know, probably still does. Now this is probably the trickiest level. Uh, timing is everything, and you put one foot wrong on one of those platforms, and you, you fall to your death. So thank goodness there's no timer here because I do like to take my time. And I do remember as a kid, as a child, thinking this was one of the hardest games ever. And it took me about six months to pass this level. <laughs> but then the one day I watched my uncle do it. And then my strategy going forward for all of my games was to watch my uncle play them first and then just copy his strategy. So we've made it to the final level. Hopefully this time I'll be able to release the bolts for the scaffolding. Or are they referred to as rivets? I've done well to get all this way with three lives. That doesn't normally happen. Oh, and apologies, it wasn't supposed to go on this long. I was supposed to have completed it like four or five minutes ago. But this is always one of the problems about playing a game uh, unscripted and just talking all the way through it. I mean, this level's quite difficult, uh, and it, there's still a challenge, it still holds up. You see that? He just nipped me there. <laughs> I thought I'd gotten away with it. You watch, this will be a massive embarrassment. I won't be able to finish this last level. Which is a shame, because I wanted to show you the continuation of the first level, once you bring down the scaffolding. Just because it mixes things up a bit, and the uh, holes in the ground uh, and obstacles are slightly different. Could you imagine if this game had like 10 levels? It probably would have got a master game or an AA rave. And that's always been a criticism of Donkey Kong of mine. There just aren't enough levels. Right, come on. Almost there. Must concentrate. Come on. Oh, jump. Sometimes you jump and uh, I don't know if it's the control, the controls or... Oh, there we go. Yay. Woo See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. He's actually landed on his chin. Bloody hell. <laughs> so not too bad. I've finished with two lives. Uh, considering I haven't played it in God knows how many years. And now I get to show you the first level and, and the difference. Look at that. Not bad. Not bad. So I won't keep you any longer. If you like this video, please let me know in the comment section. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, please share with other like-minded people. And just so you don't miss any future videos that I release, don't forget to ring that bell, as it will send you a notification as soon as I upload. Well, thanks again for watching, and until next time, bye! Thank you.